Well, it has been about five days or so since his case was dropped at the court and uh, we are joined by the C former CS for Treasury, uh, Henry Rotich, uh, to give us some of the uh, intrigues and the happenings that were there for the four years that the case has been in court. So thank you so much, Waziri, for your time. We really appreciate uh, for you to share with us the story of how the case has been going on. The charges were dropped a week ago. What's your first or the initial reaction to it and how do you feel now that you're a free man? Well, uh, you know, any festive season you must enjoy. Uh, even if you have uh, some baggage with you. But uh, as I said, for this one at least, as come at the, at the time when we are just uh, right in the festive season and we will enjoy it better than the previous ones. Yeah. And uh, how did you find yourself in court and what was there? What, what happened? Yes, I found myself in court because I was charged on uh, some offenses which uh, uh, from the face of it really is offenses that are quite hopeful. Uh, those are not really offenses that you expect a Minister for Finance to, to uh, get into it. However, I mean, uh, the framers of the charges uh, made a decision to charge me and that is the reason why we found ourselves in court. Uh, it's a tragic story of two dams which uh, were procured by KVDA and um, how it ended up the Treasury is um, in the middle of this thing is still something uh, that we are, I was yet to comprehend. Uh, but um, we thank God uh, we went through the process and uh, now we, the court has made a pronouncement on this. Um, I think it was unfortunate that uh, they put up uh, charges which to, to our view really had no clear evidence. Uh, being a finance person, I I know the laws that we actually set our, ourselves to implement, and uh, none of those um, offences really happened. It was unfortunate that uh, we just had to be dragged into this process. Uh, but anyway, finally we, we've gone through and we have emerged stronger. The charges of conspiracy to defraud government, uh, there is the violation of the economic anti-corruption and economic crime law uh, and violation of procurement laws and, um, and uh, public financial management law. So, in sum, I was charged with about 19 counts of, of, of those various law, violations of those laws. And um, from the look of things, uh, uh, we, I, I know that um, with my finance knowledge, we could not commit such kind of uh, offense. I'll pick, for example, procurement law, for example, which is uh, not within my, my responsibilities. Uh, however, the DPP saw fit to charge us on that, but I guess they were tying it with a, a conspiracy charge, which uh, was basically trying to lump up responsibilities into to include my responsibilities as cabinet secretary to the treasury. So it was a bit um, awkward that uh, you've been charged on things that first you are not involved in. Uh, charges on the public financial management, um, majority, most of it are, are offenses that ordinarily would be uh, violated by an accounting officer. On conspiracy charges, I don't remember. <laughs>
meeting any of the accused. We were initially 28 accused persons, and uh, it was really absurd to be told that you conspired, conspired with people you've never met, you've never had any interaction, and uh, all of them uh, being you're all lumped together and say you are all conspired. So, it, in a nutshell, really, the, the framing of the, the charges were sort of, uh, looks to me, was, was just meant to achieve some uh, extraneous political interests as opposed to really uh, focusing on what are the offences that have been committed by the responsible persons that were meant to be oversighting those uh, responsibilities. The charges on procurement uh, is, is, is a responsibility of a different entity. And uh, they were not first, I would say, no violation done in any bad faith. And uh, if, if uh, I wouldn't want to say that they should have preferred charges to so and so and so and so. I mean, they chose to, to prefer charges to us uh, as a group, even if we were not involved in procurement matters. Uh, as I said, maybe they had a different intention other than uh, focusing on uh, really the, the, real, the real thing. Uh, but that, that happened and uh, we are glad that uh, the court found no evidence to, to support any of the charges that were leveled against us. Feasibility study is really a responsibility of the entity that is undertaking the project. Uh, as far as uh, I've interacted with this now uh, over the last four years, uh, it's clearly established that there was uh, feasibility studies die, done a long time ago, some uh, 90s, uh, and they're there. I mean, uh, we, we have seen budgets year in, year out, during my tenure, trying to pay off some of the people that facilitated the feasibility studies. So that's a testament that the feasibility studies were done, and they are there. They, it was, uh, I think, produced. I saw the Auditor General report, so I've cited all of, all of them. Uh, but. Uh, when you see it, um, you know, the, later on to justify some of these um, offenses that I had preferred to us, there was that, you know, talk that there was no feasibility studies. And I, I remember a report that was sent around and saying that uh, there's a team who have been put in place to, to recheck this. But the truth of the matter is that there were feasibility studies done as way back to 80s. Uh, this can be confirmed by the line ministries because they are the ones who wrote to us in sometimes in March 2016 to ask us to, to fund these projects, uh, which according to them, they were viable projects. They were Vision 2030 projects. So whenever you mention Vision 2030 projects, there were projects that had been conceived as projects that are meant to deliver fusion 2030. Surely those projects cannot have been planned. Uh, those projects, you cannot call them that they didn't have any feasibility study. Uh, the ministry themselves have their master plan. The KVDA has their um, strategic uh, um, paper. And all of them are captured in, in that. So, so uh, I think somebody must be trying to be uh, uh, fooling somebody else. I mean, when you say that there are no feasibility studies, I don't know what you mean. And uh, when you see the, the nature of the contract works that were 
to be done. It was sort of called EPC, which is Engineering Design and uh, Procure and Construct. So I, uh, they were the the bidders were asked to review the feasibility studies before they start uh, work. So obviously they could not have been told to review what is not existing. So there was something in place. They were just to confirm those feasibility studies and start work. And uh, do you think any money was lost during this Aurora and Kimorer uh, deal? You said 60, we have reports of 63 billion shillings. Did we lose any money? You know, this is uh, what I have been seeing in the media right from the beginning. 63 billion scandal, 63 million lost. I want to tell Kenyans that uh, I was the cabinet secretary. You cannot lose 63 billion. It's impossible. Anybody telling you that uh, money is lost to that tune is either unaware of government procedures of how money is dispersed. Uh, so, in a nutshell, just to break down this number, 63 billion is the the total cost of the project. Yeah. Now, it can't be that the 63 billion has been expended, yet the project was stopped by the investigating agency. So the entire amount that was to be utilized still remains with the with the financiers. You draw down the money when you have achieved some milestone. So what was expended was only the advance payments to the contractor. Um, I think it's about between about 7.7 to 7.5 there, there about depending on the exchange rate that you use at that particular time a billion of which I think 3.4 was Kimware and 4 point something for, for Aror together is that 7.7 and these were money meant to facilitate the contractor to go to the ground uh, they were guaranteed by banks so that uh, in the event they don't uh, perform, they are going to have their securities cancelled. That's a standard procedure that is done for every project we do in Kenya. So there was nothing unusual about it. So, um, so that is the money. And of course the other money that was uh, expended was for the insurance to cover the lenders uh, from any financial risks and that again was contingent to money being disbursed to Kenya. Uh, should the country have utilized the entire amount then the financials would have been covered by that insurance. If they don't disburse the money then that money is not uh, 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 any cost to, gov to government um, and that is basically uh, how it was structured so obviously yes these payments were made to to have the contractor move on site uh, but as you know uh, this project had to be stopped by for reasons that there was an investigation that had been launched and uh, you are already the investigation and ultimate uh, prosecution included also the the contractors so obviously uh, how would they have worked if you want to arrest them you know so and that stalled the whole project and uh, they had of course expended some of the money to acquire equipments to move on site while the kvda was in the process of acquiring the land and, 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 and doing the normal things that has to be done to facilitate an investor to start work or to mobilize the site. So with that, uh, with
with, with, with the project being uh, now uh, cancelled, I know it was not cancelled immediately, it was just stopped for this process to, to be done. Then I think the contractor had to go to arbitration because now they are saying, we, we, yes, we have your money, we want to start the, the project, you are not giving us the, the space to do it. So, and this is where, where we are, they, you can see the government has already worked on to restart the project right from where they left. And um, I believe it was just trying to sort out all the mess that uh, this uh, prosecution uh, cost. It was not lost. The, I mean, how do you lose money that it is with somebody who wants to come and do the work? So my, no money has been lost? No money has been lost. I mean, I give you money to go to the site and I have guaranteed it. Uh, how, how is it a loss? Because you just give me the site and I go and start work. Uh, and uh, the advance guarantee is there. Uh, or reach an agreement if you want to cancel your project. Uh, see all the cost in card. Uh, the contractor refunds back the money. Uh, but they are covered by a guarantee. So it is, the word used is advance payment. You have been advanced to do something. And, uh, and that's it. It's as simple as that. Perhaps uh, Kenyans would like to know, how was your experience going in and out of court? Did you lose friends? What happened? What was it like? Uh, I don't know uh, how, whether I, I lost friends as such. Uh, because the friends I, I, knew, I have still friends. Unless some have chosen not to be my friends, <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know. And uh, and a friend a friend will not tell you I'm no longer your friend. So um, difficult to to say that. But I think uh, uh, I, I I guess you mean uh, were you getting more frequent interaction with your friends or things? Yeah, I would say yes, of course. You know, when you are in that uh, office, there are many things you deal with it and many people you interact with. But now that I was not there, I would obviously, I, I had less interaction with, with other people. Of course, it's uh, not a, go a good experience to, for anybody to go through in the first place. Um, because, you see, as an individual, uh, puts your life in a standstill. Uh, you, all the four and a half years was wasted in waiting for this process to end. There are obviously a cost of time and other uh, opportunities foregone. And uh, of course the family, uh, they are also affected. Uh, my children and uh, and and, and uh, parents and and, and the relatives and the majority of the neighbors. We, uh, everybody wanted to know what was going on with this case, and you could feel, see the anguish in them. You know, so I, I would I'll put that as a greater you know you know every time. Uh, you are asked what is what's going on when 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 is these things getting through so so it's just became a a daily discussion with the people I I interact about you know and you you want to move on you 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 can move on you you have to wait this process to end so it's not it's not a good experience to anybody to go through. I don't think I would blame anybody because uh, we were all arrested together, meaning that uh, there was an intention to charge everybody. Uh, the decision to withdraw charges on anybody is a decision by the prosecutor. So he made, he made that uh, decision. And, um, and, and, and that's it because really uh, I, I wouldn't say that they are the ones who initiated this 
uh, of course they are uh, probably they were invited for a negotiation whatever they discussed and they were let off the hook is is uh, it's up to them but i think i knew of my innocence all through from the beginning and i was saying fine if you would want to proceed with the case we will proceed and and we will defend ourselves and, uh, and let's let's see the let's see the evidence you you have against against us and uh, and as you have seen from the judgment they did not have evidence so uh, it means that out of the 28 people they preferred charges they let a significant number out of the hook and converted them into state witness in a desperate uh, attempt to to get more witnesses yeah uh, so uh, i i can see their predicaments in raising witnesses is associated with with perhaps uh, converting others into state witnesses and in probably in a manner that was um, unconventional in the sense that uh, for sure you had somebody who has written a, a witness statement before he was charged then uh, later on go and write another statement which sort of uh, which sort of negates the first one so i could see there is some game being played here by the prosecutor to to perhaps look for enough witnesses so i could see the, the desperate uh, situation the why in particularly in the treasury because i, I would imagine they are they were sort of uh, having less um, because they are charged a team of us there and uh, i think they probably realize that you charge everybody so who will explain some of the some of the procedures that we do at the treasury so i think it was just uh, 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 trying to get somebody who is within the workplace to to see if they can provide some information uh, that could probably pin other people uh, but uh, i mean that, that to me i treat that as a prosecution strategy that probably was was ill-informed or uh, very uh, to me very very reckless i would say you know the charges were dropped because the prosecution did not do its job uh, do you think they did their job why why did it fail and uh, did you have a hand in, in it in trying to perhaps uh, sway some of the witnesses uh, which which witnesses the majority of the witnesses there i don't know them they were all from some of our KVDA, I never met them. I have never associated with them. I don't know where they live. And uh, the ones in uh, Treasury, yes, much as uh, unknown to them, that they were turned uh, witnesses. So, and we, we didn't, uh, interact because one of our bail staff was not to associate with witnesses otherwise if i had and they had that information they would have withdrawn my bail tab as simple as that you know i think they added the fact that you call witness and you don't lead evidence obviously is either you have shied away from from calling them for reasons best known to you and one of my suspicion on this is because you hurriedly converted people to come and testify against others and you find yourself in an awkward situation and you say okay maybe if i lead them to evidence and they are probably not the genuine owners of what was written there um would would, would probably work in our favor maybe and, uh, and probably they, they had to withdraw the earlier strategy of converting people uh, into that in a, in a manner 
<laughs> unprecedented in a way. So, so I think, uh, and, uh, to me, I, I found it. Uh, I, 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 I'm. This is my first time being charged in in, in, in the court of laws. But my observation is that uh, a prudent prosecutor would not really be. Uh, I mean, struggling to present uh, a case. I mean, you brought this case to court. You know, you know your evidence. Uh, just come and tell the judge your evidence. We defend ourselves, and as simple as that. But now, when you start charging others, discharging others, let them write another statement. I mean, it's just, uh, it looks like you're playing some monkey business in in a, a job that requires a lot of high professional standards in, in, in a way. So I, I, I think my, ob my observation was that it was just unwarranted. It was, it was just um, uh, reasons best to know to themselves. Uh, but I found it strange, really, yeah. And uh, your former boss, President Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, was the one who gave you the job. And of course, after the issues that came up, do you think he threw you under the bus during the whole fiasco? You know, uh, you are from, you are working under him in, in the position I was in, yeah? And uh, if, he was advised by the people who are charging us and he felt that uh, yes we want to undergo wants to put us through this uh, uh, process uh, uh, well and good but to, to me it wasn't warranted the way it later on turned turn out to be uh, the, the way uh, it was sort of politicized later uh, gave me some indication that perhaps there was uh, extraneous consideration to, to charge me uh, because how else would you explain the way the political competitors in the run-up to the last election used this uh, case knowing very well that it is in court but they could use it to their political mileage or their political and you could see the wing associated with that was the person you are saying that uh, I should be blaming. So obviously it means that uh, over time I began to uh, feel that uh, yeah, maybe there was some, um, you know, a choreographed um, uh, intention here which whether he knew or not it's, 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 it's up to uh, up to him, but the way the turn of events could give me an indication that yes, it looks like uh, because if it was a case that needs to go through its court process up to last week, so just leave it uh, go to court. If if the, if the court would have found it, yes, the, <laughs> there was money laws or whatever they were packaging there then uh, you you and that is usually the standard i mean the way it was uh, prejudiced in the public court says a lot in terms of your question i i don't take it in any 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 way because uh, first we as i said earlier we we were charged together you know then um, I think the prosecution strategy is exactly what I've mentioned, that probably we wanted to look for people 
I high number of witnesses so that uh, uh, and leave others to, to be charged in this case so to me I I, I, I just uh, associate this to a very dirty game by the prosecution to charge people first then later on get them out of the hook using I mean Sure. So fa fast, why charge him in the first place if he didn't have any, 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 <laughs> any crime? Uh, is it that an afterthought? Is it that uh, you know you end uh, went and provided some incentives by saying that you you do this so that you you are discharged? I mean, I, I don't think cases are handled in that manner. Uh, just make a decision. You are, do you have evidence of this person? If he doesn't have to get him out of the charge sheet at the beginning before you charge them, and instead of uh, you know wandering around, you know to you know uh, uh, and and turn others to uh, to be witnesses in a manner that just shows how you oh, probably your your office either did not do more work at the beginning, yeah. Because if you had done your homework well, you would not have charged him in the first place. And uh, probably would have just turned him straight as a witness. Yeah? But to charge him and then turn him witness, and basically you don't know what you're doing. As we bring it to a close, do you think we should go back to the Aurora and Kimware uh, dams and get them ready? Uh, now that, uh, as you say, no money was lost. To me, given, uh, I mean, uh, the the... They had already done all the, the work. There was the contractor in place. There was financing in place, and um, I hope those uh, those uh, there, there is discussion to restart it. I don't know what the negotiations are entailing, but if it is already uh, something that had already been packaged and has already. Uh, gone far like that it's just a question of getting it uh, what went wrong what are the issues correct and then proceed with the with the with the, with the projects they are still necessary um, you, you see we, we now have a lot of rain maybe they would be you would be uh, storing those water for for the time when we'll have droughts and all that so it is, it's still relevant um, projects to be done. If the government has decided that they are not doing the project and they want to cancel, they go and discuss with the con contractor, and I believe that is what they are discussing. If they want to continue, the contractor go to the ground, you have the money. No? It's as simple as that. Eh? It is even guaranteed. So you just cash the guarantee. Yeah? But you have to explain why you are not continuing with the project because there is somebody who may have already, they, they, they must have done experience. They bought the equipments and all that, so you have to work out the costs, just like any contract. Whenever you terminate a contract or whenever you make a decision to reverse it, just read the clause. Just read the clause carefully. Is the termination tells you what? Is it lawful termination? I mean, you wanted to do the project, and then you said, I'm not doing it anymore. And then you had led somebody to start going to site. He has already incurred expenditures, and that is why they went to arbitration, I believe. And so that somebody can arbitrate, because it is in the clause, it is in the agreement, that uh, if there is a dispute, and if you declare a dispute, and then uh, you go to somebody to arbitrate and say, okay, this is our story. We, after an I said we want to, we are not doing the project. So look at the law, what look at the agreement. How do you exit a contract? There is uh, conditions there to exit a contract. If it is lawfully terminated, then you work out the, your costs. You say bye bye. Uh, as simple as that. Uh, I mean, that is how things are done, you know. Not uh, prosecuting people, yeah. and then they say he's done. These guys have lost money. Then they go back to go to you. Then uh, you you expose the government by doing the illegal things. Now, would you would you go back 
to public service now that this matter is over and it is behind him i think i'll leave that for a question for the next day uh, let me uh, rest and uh, enjoy the christmas maybe we can have that conversation in january yeah thank you so much Wazir. thank you well i thank you very much that has been the former cs for treasury henry rotich thank you so much and uh, thank you so much for the time that you've given us uh, for this time waziri